And um, Al said something which uh, I know that John and, Ju and um, June agreed on. And that was they wanted their kids in church. They wanted their kids, even with their problems in church, in order to meet their friends at church, these other believers that they had shared so much with. And they wanted their friends in church so that the kids could meet Jesus. When I see this and remember this story and then <clears throat> compare it to the gospel today, it reminds me of my very firm belief that the cry of every human being is to be known and to be understood. To be valued in a community of other people, not in isolation. And to be comforted when we need it. And also to be inspired to be the best person that we can be. See, I think that's exactly the way the woman at the well came in the presence of Jesus. To be known and understood. To be valued in a community. And to be inspired by this new person she had just met. Even in this short sketch we see in this woman, we see pretty much what her personality was like. And as I've said so often, when you read this whole scripture, uh, things are just bouncing together in very strange ways and questions aren't really answered and new things come into play. You have to remember to read in between the lines. There must have been much more going on in this encounter than what we get in this short scripture passage. And the woman's personality comes pretty clear to us. First of all, she engages Jesus very quietly, very softly. As a stranger, of course, she would do that. But she gets into the conversation with him very quickly and seemingly with some comfort. Now, this well would have been the local hangout uh, for gathering and talking about things. And probably when you went to the well, if you were one of those townspeople, you would expect to hear some news, some juicy gossip, maybe, that you could take back to the family. And you could say, did you hear what went on at the church at the dance the other night? Oh, man. <laughs> Nothing went on other than dancing, but you get my point. And this woman was not self-righteous. She wasn't arrogant or rude, which she well could have been, being in, encountered by this stranger and all of a sudden getting into very, some very serious talk. And she is surprisingly open-minded. She speaks her mind, and she is spontaneous with Jesus. And she even tells him and admits to the fact that she suffered many disappointments and obviously had some pain in her life, emotional pain at least. And she understands religious things. She, kn she knows what she's talking about between the Samaritans and the Jews. And her discussion is not an ordinary discussion because talking with Jesus, the two of them break through a lot of barriers, a lot of strong prohibitions in that society. The Jew versus the Samaritan, the man talking openly to a woman, and the worship styles and the places and the rules Lots of rules about worship. And some of those rules we have in our own heads, they bounce around continually about the way things should be done. The unfortunate thing about the history of the church, among the many good things, there are those times when the church, instead of turning to a banquet, chooses instead to go to the drive-up window at McDonald's. God is offering the banquet and sometimes the church chooses McDonald's. There were so many barriers and so many stereotypes and so many false ideas that needed breaking down and Jesus shows him doing, himself doing that with this woman. And some barriers that need to be broken down, if they are not broken down, create a lot of pain. I remember clearly in that Lutheran church people saying, I don't know why they bring those children to church. And every time Bobby would have a seizure in the midst of the worship service, although it was confined to that pew that they sat in, and Al contained his son and, and gently nurtured him while this was going on, people would say, well, it happened again. Barriers, stereotypes, rules. 
Jesus goes so far beyond those barriers. And not only does he go beyond them, which is annoying enough, but he also asks us to follow him across those barriers. The barriers that keep us from experiencing the fullness of God, the boxed-in thinking that everyone in this room suffers from in some way or another, you and me together in that, in that category. And there is no holding, however, of Jesus where we want him. Every moment he may lead us in a new direction and a new understanding. And the world of the individual, like this woman, the world gets shaken. It's said in such a subtle way when she goes back to her people, she says, could this be the Messiah? Could this be the Savior of the world? Never expecting that she would meet the Savior of the world face to face at a well in her own neighborhood, the hangout place. This kind of encounter can arrive through the lives of any of Jesus' brothers and sisters in faith, I believe, too. Because I certainly encountered Christ in John and June, and they were very simple people. And I encountered the mind of Christ in Al, a very sophisticated and well-to-do person. Jesus' discussion with this woman at the well gives her an option. You know, when he starts to talk to her, she can hide all of who she is. She doesn't have to talk to him about that. That's her option. Or she can be her real self and share her truth and thereby somehow seek acceptance and perhaps see her faith grow. There is great freedom in speaking the truth in the presence of God's love, and that's what she discovers. She must somehow have felt deeply Jesus' understanding and Jesus' forgiveness and Jesus' comprehension of her painful life and Jesus' acceptance. You and I would not be so graceful about telling people if we had been married five times. And we would expect to be put down for that in this society. And we wonder, what kind of a person would go through five marriages? Jesus honors her by sharing his deepest truth just as she shared hers. He says, I am the Christ. The one you are speaking to is the one you seek. Perhaps his hope for the world overflows in the presence of this ordinary, wonderful, needy, gifted woman. And maybe Jesus' hope for the world overflows in our presence too, in the presence of me and you. Adrian van Kam, who is a Dutch Catholic priest, wrote this. No greater gift can be given to people than the presence of people who allow them to be themselves. No greater growth in the spirit can be experienced than that which divine acceptance makes possible. The woman runs from Jesus with a joyful heart to tell the village people, could this be the Christ that I have met, that I have encountered? And for her and for others, a new life begins and the kingdom breaks in. And even the disciples don't understand this. Jesus' hope expressed, is expressed in his feelings and his readiness to say to them, the harvest is here. You see, people will hear this word and it will change their lives and it will open them up. Do you believe this? More than anything else, that's the question. Do you believe that his love overflows for the world in your presence? And do you believe that he is the Christ? And that his way is the way? No rules attached and no doctrines. Just a way of living. Amen.